Everyone and welcome back to the Everything Canada Soccer podcast, episode number twenty, where we're going to discuss Canada and their final two games in the World Cup. Sadly, we are out, of course, after the loss against Croatia. Very tough, which is partly the reason why we waited so long to make this video, just because it's a little bit of a soft spot. Obviously, we're both we're both very sad that Canada's out. Um, but I'm always I'm here again with Felipe. How are we doing, Felipe? I'm doing good, Jory. Uh, good. You know. Just to watch Brazil lose into Cameroon, so I'm well, also happy about that. True. But, uh, so I mean, I guess there's there's that to be happy about. My my own Germany did, uh, did the best thing that they yeah. could and uh, disappoint me like they always do. But you know, where it's a transitional period, so we don't have to get into that. Anyway, yeah. before we start, just want to thank our sponsor for our staff apparel, World of Soccer, for everything that we have. Stay tuned for anything else that might come out in the future. You never know. Um, anyway, let's get right into it. So, Croatia 4, Canada 1. Let's start on a bright note. Our first ever World Cup goal within two minutes of the game. I was, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll admit, I was sobbing. I was so excited. I was crying, man. Like, seeing my country score a goal in the, just right away too. I didn't have the weight. Oh, the emotions got the best of me, but... How were how do you react? What was your celebrations like? It, it was awesome, man. I actually I did something I never did in a in a soccer game, which was um, I went to a cineplex. I went to a movie theater oh, with yeah. my wife, uh, and it was a really good vibe. Like everyone was wearing Canada jersey. Some of the lights were on, so people were like standing up, yelling yeah. and stuff. So my concern was like, I'm in a movie theater. Am I gonna yell? I'm gonna jump if that is a goal. And that was exactly their reaction, right? But the yeah. thing is, like, I would say majority of the people in the theater did the same thing. They all jumped. I yeah. even saw a guy dropping his drink on the floor, right? Oh, my and gosh. People were just, like, hugging each other like you actually see in a stadium. And I thought that was pretty cool inside the movie theater. That's um, so sick. Of course, the, the, the end result wasn't what we, were, what we expected. Mm -hmm. But I think that goal, especially in the beginning of the game, he hyped up a lot of Canadians. It was, a, yeah. it was definitely a good weekend morning to start. You know what I mean? So Yeah, no. I mean, starting starting the morning that way, at, was it, I think it was the 9 a.m. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So great, especially after everything against that Belgium game. It just seemed like we finally were able to put everything together within those couple minutes and surprise Croatia. However, after the absolute elation, football does its thing and crushes you at the same time. So after about, what was it, about 15, 20 minutes of us, you know, playing well in the counterattack, eventually our injured midfielders, Eustachio and Atiba Hutchinson, bless their hearts, were not fully fit for this game, which... In hindsight, I think that we can look to John Herdman and ask why Kone didn't start. He played very, he played all right in Belgium, but more just about his legs, just to help cover the midfield. Because as we saw against a proper footballing side like Croatia, we do struggle. And after that twenty minutes, it just they just pegged us back the entire game. Yeah, and I think that you know it's quite. It was quite um, clear on the first match that Atiba wasn't a hundred percent physically, like let's say, fit. Yeah, uh, I mean, with all the respect, phenomenal player. He is the most uh, out of all of these guys in this group. I think he's the one that deserves the most oh, to be getting course. minutes in this World Cup for what he's yeah. done for Canada Soccer. Yeah, but um, when you come to about this this level of of competition, like you know, you can't take that for granted. Right, like I mean, not, not 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 like not take for granted. I mean, you can treat Croatia like a, a a game that you can just, especially when you're still fighting for a spot. Yeah, you can put someone that's 70, 60 percent of his physical shape. He hasn't played a single game for Besiktas this season. Like, yeah. you know, it, it is sad, but uh, we should have played even like Leon Fraser. I don't think he got a chance in this World Cup. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you talk about Kone, right? Absolutely, but uh, I don't know. Like, there are, we could have done. A better move there with 25 minutes here, right? About 15 minutes after the goal, 25 minutes of game, you could clearly see Atiba had no legs anymore. Like he was, yeah, being dominated but, yeah. by Modric, by Kovacic, like all of the midfielder pieces of Croatia. They were putting us in a circle. Like we're running, we're running behind the ball. We're not running. Mm -hmm. We're not playing D, right? And I feel exactly. like um, that was clear. And Herdman had to have time to make that change. Like, sure, we're, I think we're losing to one on half time. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was two one. They scored two right before half. But we could have made some changes and maybe try, maybe try the two two. You know what I mean? Stayed mm -hmm. alive for the last match, right? 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I can definitely put that on on Herdman's bill. And I also think that we mentioned that in the in the previous video when Jamal was here too. Um, you know, his comments backfire in a bad way. I think that the media interpreted it wrong. I think he was yeah. talking that he, he he didn't expect people to see that. You know what I mean? He was talking that to his players. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the change room talk. Yeah. That you know as a coach that it happens and mm -hmm. that's you fired up your players. Uh, I think the media took that and, and twisted, you know what I mean? And yeah. I think that kind of backfired. The Croatian players had fire on their eyes, man. You could see they were thirsty to win much more than the first game. Yeah. They were diving at every single tackle, like they were going on the ball aggressive. And I think that I was a bit of hurt most fall on there. Uh, again, not not saying like for him to take full responsibility, but he made a mm -hmm. comment, right? And, and he ended up... Yeah. Like, so. Well, like just just on that topic, the way I see it is Canadians as a people, we aren't we're typically more agreeable than other nations. We're like, you know, the complete opposite of our United States brethren down there. So we're not cocky. We're not like in each other's faces. I mean, look at, for example, Hockey Canada and the success that we have at hockey. Like half the time when I'm watching the World Juniors, I'm hoping the other team wins the final, not Canada. You know, like it just like we're we're people that are so nice and so oh, that's really the only adjective i can have that's coming to my mind at the moment but the way john herdman kind of carried the canadian name after that game against belgium especially after we lost i could see if we won that game against belgium then i think he has a little bit of a right to say that but man he just i don't think he really displayed canadians great as a whole because the entire world is watching the world cup there'll be billions of viewers watching this entire thing now he's gonna say that and now it's everywhere now croatia hates us <laughs> so that's great <laughs> but yeah the blood was the blood was oh. in their their eyes as and i was even gonna say right like i mean and they even like turn out to be you know some sad moments right like you, you probably notice in the game every time Bor uh, milan borjan touched the ball the croatian fans were booing him swearing at him right and and again yeah. like um you know, now you 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 got them hot headed, and uh, mm -hmm. Serbians and Croatians already have that that history. Like we saw Shakiri today yeah. against Serbia, and he always yeah. plays well against Serbia because of the background. But it is it is a hot topic. Yeah, uh, and that you know, I don't think that was also cool for Croatian fans to do that to version, but I think that also was one of the backfire spins. Like yeah. it's something that it could have been more peaceful if th those comments were not leaked, right? Yeah, um, I think. I think that would have happened regardless with the sign on Borian, just because I yeah, think that, that, that was the made sign. before. This, yeah, the sign was made before yeah, yeah, yeah. they took to the field, but just that added context doesn't help. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but but again, like uh, after watching the three games, like watching some of the other games as well, I mean, that's my feeling, but I'll ask yours as well. I feel like our biggest mistake was not, not biggest mistake, but biggest failure was actually not winning the first game. Yeah. Um, you know, we saw how Belgium perform. Even when Lukaku was back, like they were out of shape, like not yeah. synchronized at all, no yeah. chemistry. Um, so I feel like definitely not the team that was 2018. Sure, they didn't make it that, like they made, I think, was uh, semifinals or semis, yeah. Uh, semifinals, right? But at the same time, I think like uh, uh, we missed an opportunity, big opportunity there of winning actually that game, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, we can talk about penalties that maybe were not called our way, but in the end yeah. of the day, it's it's been a strange World Cup on that. You can't yeah. play against like you got to do your best, and even if you get a, pen, a penalty not call, you still should win the game by one goal or two goals if you're doing your best. Um, yeah. So no, I I completely agree, and that's easily able to segue into the third game when we were, came up really flat footed. I mean. To be honest, I don't think Borean playing that ball the way he did. I mean, you're taught, you know, when you're younger, I was taught as a player, if in doubt, kick it out. And Borean's experience, I don't understand why he didn't just smash the ball yeah. as hard as he could and as far away as he could. It was, it was, I don't know, it was uncharacteristic. Look, and I think look, it unsettled us. Um, I think that if he was a younger goalie, he would have done that. Yeah. Borean plays in probably one of the most stressful soccer environments you can have serbia like like uh you yeah. can get hot you know what i mean like he mm -hmm. he had to get penalties partisan against red star like fans yeah. throwing things on his head uh if you watch the goal that he scored last season the fans like fireworks on the stadium it's pressure yeah. man he's used to pressure i think that that was the problem he thought that he was gonna execute something right 
and he was calm and he wasn't anxious. I think if he was a bit anxious, he just closed his eyes and kicked yeah, the ball yeah, in the right. different direction to do it. But he was so calm that he ended up mm -hmm. making the mistake. A bit selfish, in my opinion. Like I said, I think like also when you are at that age, you should have the judgment that it's a World Cup. I know we're out, but we're trying to win this game. Two minutes in the game or three minutes in the game. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I thought that. Yeah, of course we can put it a goal on his bill. I don't think we should have put it a game on his bill. I think that we had no, the opportunity to score. Uh, I think Herdman could have moved a bit faster on some changes. Uh, yeah. And I think that second goal, it was kind of like we shook on the first goal. And the second goal, we're sleeping defensively. Like, mm -hmm. Miller let it a bit of a space that he, he he didn't do the whole workup and then the latch back, right? So, yeah. uh, I just want to point one thing out because a lot of people talk about Borgian, right? Mm -hmm. I, I played as a goalie as a kid and growing up as a teenager. Uh, you know, Steven Vittori's pass was awful. You know what I mean? It's almost like it, it puts, it makes that judgment that he came to him, it's because he had a fraction of a second to decide. Yeah, if that pass was a bit more calm, or if he protected the ball a bit better, holded the defender, and passed the ball to create more space for Milan Borja, maybe he had more seconds to think about it and yeah. take it a better decision. So I just want to point it out that the pass from the defender was also horrible, and uh, it, it, you know it's a teamwork, right? Pointing yeah. the fingers, yeah. it's easy, but uh, again, I cannot definitely say that the CB failed as well. So yeah, on a, uh, yeah, just on Victoria there, I'll I'll make this comment. I think I don't want to be too harsh, but if Vittoria is in our starting center backs for the next World Cup, we are in trouble. No. Just because, I mean, he's great in the air, don't get me wrong, and I think it would have been better if John Herman were to just keep us in a low block, just set us back, hit on the counter with our pace. However, for some reason, he didn't say that, didn't see that part. I think it would have benefited us a bit more just because Vittoria is a bit taller and he can handle that stuff. But on the ball, and especially when there's a pace player or even... We had two goals in this World Cup against us that were just a long ball over the top. That's a bit embarrassing, especially when you are the kings of CONCACAF, so to speak. Yeah. You know. So anyway, I'll, I'll leave it there. Hopefully that our center backs in four years are a bit of an improvement. But I think we have some talent in Europe coming up, mm -hmm. uh, some younger players that we might not know right now. Like I actually find out it today. You know that, that, that uh, program from Edmonton that Alfonso Davis came from before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, BNB soccer or something like that. I forgot. EDB, yeah. EDB soccer. Good they have uh, two kids that came from their academy that are playing youth uh, Turkish league, right? Premier League. Really? Uh, yeah. One, it's uh, the team that Balotelli was playing last year, Kashimi mm. And the other one, it's uh, Sam Zakadubis. Uh, uh, he's uh, he's uh, on tri trial this summer there. And this, uh, this winter, sorry. Uh, and those are 18 years old kids. They, they can be eligible next World Cup. Mm -hmm. We do have young talents that I truly feel that should be explored more, um, like Liam Fraser, we, I yeah. think, right? Uh, but I think that we're slowly trying, like, I'm seeing that through the United States, and I don't want to make the MLS sounds like a bad system for football. Mm -hmm. But to that level of World Cup, uh, they started lining up for the United States last game, right now, this last game that they had. Yeah. Not a single player that plays in the MLS. Everyone in Europe. Yeah. Zimmerman was the only one from MLS from the past couple of games. He started on the bench this last game. Who started yeah. as Carter Vickers, that plays for Tel uh, Celtic. In Celtic, Scotland. yeah. So I truly feel that, we, like, I get it. Montreal FC has a great youth academy. Um, but once we start exporting those players, we got to bring, like, yeah. we got to give more chance to talents from Europe because exactly. they are playing at the highest level. They have the best physical and conditioning coaches. They have the best sports scientists behind them. So in terms of infrastructure, they're ahead. With all the exactly. respect to MLS. So we got to take advantage of that. Yeah, I think everything you're saying is right. Vittoria, it's in Portuguese league. I get it. So not the greatest league, and he's also old. I think that's one of the reasons why he's that's old. An, yeah, of course. But for next World Cup, think about 2026. we got to gotta explore those young guys. Yeah, right. Give it, give, give it a chance, especially. But, I mean, with transfer rumors going with Alistair Johnson, probably going to Celtic, Kone being linked with Watford or Sheffield United, it's... Who knows what actually could happen? I mean, four years ago, we hadn't even beat the States in like years. And then we eventually beat them a year later in 2019. Like so, so much can happen in four years. It hasn't even been four years since COVID, right? So, so much can happen with this team after a consistent period of time. So I think us as Canadians, especially, I, I don't use Twitter personally. I just look on there just to see if I miss any news or anything like that, just to stay updated. I don't particularly comment. But everyone was like freaking out. I'm like, guys, it's this is a long term plan. We need to relax. 
let this is was gonna happen. We were gonna not get. I don't think we were gonna get killed this badly, but it exposed Canada as a whole. Showed where we're weak. <laughs> Defense. <laughs> So now we know what to fix and now we can, Canada, if we can get our crap together, can put a plan in place. And I think that will be okay. But moving on from the poor results, what are your now thoughts on the rest of the tournament now that Canada's out and everything like that? Yeah. Who, um, what are your thoughts overall? I think that it, it, it's been a crazy tournament. We're seeing three Asian teams. I mean, Australia is not in Asian geographically mm -hmm. speaking, but in soccer they are. Like they're, they're, yeah. they're part of the AFC. AFC. Yeah. Um, I think that that's incredible. You know, Japan, Korea, there. Um, we're seeing Spain losing, Brazil losing, um, two, two smaller nations, let's say this way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Morocco beating uh, uh, bigger teams. Uh, we're seeing Japan, Spain, and Germany, man. Come on. Like, how yeah. hard is that group? Who thought that would happen? You know what I mean? Besides Japanese yeah. people, of course. Uh, yeah. But it's just. It's crazy, man. This World Cup is being a remarkable one. I don't remember. Like, of course, every World Cup, you have a dark horse. You have a yeah. team that frustrates people, right? Uh, mm -hmm. A team that does really well. I don't know. Like, expected. It might not be a dark horse, but it might be a a giant like Argentina or Spain that, mm -hmm. that stuff yeah. somewhere that you don't expect. But this World Cup, it's odd. Nothing you can predict kind of thing. Yeah, so. right. Everything it makes me over, even man. more mad because we could take a huge advantage of that. Seeing Croatia, Morocco passing, for example, Belgium out, Germany even out. Even if we beat Belgium, you then know, who knows so. what's going to happen, right? It could have, it's, a, it's a lot of what-ifs, but I'm proud for us to get a goal. I always said before the World Cup, I just want to see a score. Everything else is cherry on top. And we scored two goals, which, yeah. by the way, fun fact, both goals, even though the second one was an own goal, it was by Sam. Both Canadian goals were by players from Alberta. So... Our program, yeah, then, half our players are from Brampton, yet our, all of our goals came from uh, from Alberta. So A cool, fact. interesting fact. The Morocco goalie, the Ladebo and Bono, Sevilla's goalie, he is born yeah. in Montreal. So he is no also way. Canadian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, look at what a talent we're missing. He's actually a really good goalie. Uh, he's a Sevilla yeah. goalie for the past two seasons in La Liga. I yeah. did not know that. Um, I was watching uh, the game on Brazilian TV. And the mm -hmm. commenter in Portuguese said that. He's like, uh, really? uh, the goalie is actually born in a French Canadian province, whatever. And he's yeah. playing from Morocco. And I'm like, what? Like, what's going on? Uh, and then I Google, it's true. Uh, he, yeah. He's born there. But yeah, uh, one more thing about Canada soccer. I was saying something over the past couple of days. Like, I don't know if FIFA will actually change. I think we're automatically going to qualify for 2026 with US, Mexico, and you know, us, or yeah. us in this case. So there is a high chance we're playing the next Cup America uh, in yeah, 2024. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll have uh, the, the, the Nations League, the Gold Cup, and Cup America, which, in my opinion, it's much better than the Gold Cup in terms of yeah. love of competition. Yeah. Yeah. So for Canada, I think it will be a great trial. Um, one of the main mistakes, I think, of Canada soccer through the past two or three years is not thinking they would go to the World Cup and not actually doing friendly matches with competitive teams because mm -hmm. Japan was a good friendly match. Now we know that because he, he is yeah. where they are. But playing Bahrain, for example, we could have taken a better advantage. Um, Uruguay was a good well, one, I think. Yeah. Well, like, look, just for example, just for to compare the quality of everything, I mean, Qatar made the semifinals of the Gold Cup and Qatar and us both finished on zero points. So that just kind of shows the the quality yeah. i think i forgot about a, that yeah yeah i think as a as a country canada has to our goal for the next gold cup is at least to be in the finals i think and then the 2025 gold cup i think we should have a goal to win the entire thing in order to best prepare for the next world cup i think we, we have to get some sort of silverware with this team or else i think it's a failure especially in Concacaf. we can beat the us and mexico now we know we can easily compete with them but now it's can we win something with this group? And I think that's the next hurdle for this, for, especially for this John Herbman team. He has a lot of time. I trust him. He's got us here. I think after the 2026 World Cup, he might move on. Um, but who knows if Canada soccer doesn't like what he's doing, then there's always Carlo Ancelotti, who's <laughs> expressed that he, he, went, he said he wouldn't mind. I think it was the, uh, the quote, obviously. Cause Look, by, by what John Herbman did to this program, I would not feel good yeah. letting him go. I would even rather have no. him working on the head office 100%. for Canada Soccer than trying to have him as a, as a GM or something yeah. like that. I don't know if he did yeah. the role for be, Canada Soccer. I think but, he'd be great in that sort of position. 
because he worked with the women's team he works with the men's team he knows yeah. like from a to z how canada soccer works he saw yeah you know the, the mistakes they make then they know he, he knows that there's a yeah. lot of things that needs to be fixed and i think he'll be even if he steps down as a coach and be involved with canada soccer would still be my priority if i was a leader in the organization yeah. to keep john Herdman. uh a yeah. lot of not fake fans but let's say this way new fans to soccer might be criticizing him but if you actually I mean following canada soccer i've yeah. been following for at yeah. least eight years uh like you you appreciate a man either way you know what i mean yeah as a, as a character exactly. as a person as a coach so mm-hmm. uh, i would still not want it to let that go so that's just my opinion yeah. and i think that the players have a lot of the same feelings yeah no good thoughts i like that well that's it for this episode Glad that you all could join us. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, stay tuned for more. And if you have any opinions on how Canada did, drop them in the comments down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts and we could talk about them in a future video. And that is it from us. Take care, Felipe. We'll see you guys in the next one. See you, Jordy. See ya.